That's right. I'm going to say this for everybody who wants to stick around for this previous problem that I just did. And here, you know I'm talking really loudly. When you add these reactions, you have to multiply these two numbers. You have Kf, which we keep in the question, times Kf. So you can find the goal. Okay, good, good. Yes? Okay. Okay. This is number six, winter 2009, my reader page 131. Okay, so we want to compare acid strength, right? So, so we ask this is cost. We want to observe what's different. And notice what's different is where the chlorine is located. It's on the carbon closest to the acidic hydrogen. And the second one is the middle carbon. And this third one is the furthest from that acidic hydrogen. This one right here is the acidic hydrogen. So uh, this is the inductive effect, meaning it is more stabilized when there's a chlorine, chlorine in this case, and it pulls electron density towards itself. So that happens best when the chlorine or fluorine is closest to that hydrogen. So I would pick case one is the best, and then three Cool. Okay, let's see who's next. Take care. Oh, whoa. Yes. Sorry. No problem. That's fine. Yeah, let me say this for everybody, because that's a confusing issue. This is looking at a problem we just did. We always want the zero on the unfavored side, um, because everything always shifts towards the favored side. When we set up the problem, we do that with stoichiometry, and then we put the plus x back. So meaning that the plus x is going to be a really, really small number. So it shifts back a little. We're always going to do that. The only small exception that you Maybe only seen a couple times. Uh, if K is between 100 and 1 over 100, that's not considered like large or small. So K being bigger than 100, that's a large K. And K being smaller than 1 over 100 is a small K. So if it's in this range, you don't worry about this. But once it gets bigger than 100, yeah, it's products are really big. Smaller than 1 over 100, react. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay, yes. Okay. Looking at this one right here that we did earlier. Okay. If it's a KSP, uh, which means you have a solid and you're trying to dissolve it, then the solid, the bigger compound, is on the left. That's just our standard notation. If we're talking about a KF problem, and think of F as formation, you're forming the big one. So here, it's a KF. I know that because uh, it's a transition metal with a bunch of things on it. So that makes this, by convention, we always put it on the bottom side. So you just want to follow our convention. That's, how, that's all you need to know about that. Is that good? Yeah. Here you go. Uh, and that go. Here. Yeah, you know. Yes. Uh, the coordination number she's asking about, you don't use it in any calculation. It's just not that we would use it. It's just telling you conceptually how many neighbors does it have. So in the example I mentioned before, FCC, it's 12. That means if you pick any atom in the FCC structure, it has 12, literally 12 other atoms equal distant to itself. So that's it. If you go to other chemistry, you can actually do math with it, but not us. You either can memorize the numbers or like derive it visually. If you can't, if you're not a visual person, I would memorize. Okay, this is 12. This is related to what we just ended on. Uh, which one does not uh, depend on pH? Okay, you're looking for, first, let's look at the anion. 
and which one is not uh, basic? That's basic. That could be basic. That could be probably not that one. Uh, because Cl minus comes from a strong acid, HCl. That's right. And then not this one. So I'd probably pick that as my first choice. B, because CO3 uh, is basic. Now, you can also look on the flip side, and so in my mind, I, I had to accept more than one answer here, because this is not a transition metal. So it's actually not acidic. Uh, so it's a little funny. Really what they meant is, depend on lowering the pH, is really what it should have said. Yeah. So, is that helpful? Yes. Uh, the answer to this question really is saying which one does not depend on lowering the pH is what it should say. And the answer is definitely, it should be D, because the lowering the pH has to do with the anion, which is Cl here. That's right, that's why it should say lowering the pH. It's missing the word, two words, lowering the. It should say lowering the. Yeah, that's what it was intended. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, yes. Number seven. I don't recognize it. Oh, is this one of the oh it's one of the finals. Okay. Which one is true? You got B? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Uh so when it's when a liquid's in equilibrium with its vapor in a closed container, which of the following is true? The rate at which the molecules of the liquid enter the gas phase equals the rate at which the gas phase enter. That's true. So let me explain that one first, and then I'll go to E. So at equilibrium, if the vapor and the gas are at equilibrium, what that means is the number going into vapor is going to equal the number going into the liquid. The exchange rate is going to be equal such that the number of molecules in each won't change. Is that okay? So if one side has 20. Another one has 30, and one jumps to make 21, then the other one must jump to keep it at 20. That's what equilibrium means by definition. So uh, the vapor will gradually uh, change back to the vapor state uh, that is no vapor will be left. The reason that's not true is that it's in equilibrium, meaning it's not going to change right now. The way it starts, it will stay forever. Yeah, yeah, so that's why this is true. The, the change at a rate that the uh, amount of molecules in each will never change. It'll always be like, say, 20 and 10. It'll keep the same, and the keyword is equilibrium. Good, good. Three. Three. Ethyl alcohol and water become noticeably warmer when mixed. This is due to they have strong, uh, strong attractive forces. This is related to delta H of solution. I don't know if you remember that. Delta H of solution. This is chapter, I want to say 13. Has three parts: delta H one, delta H two, and delta H three. This one is the these are endothermic, receiving heat. This is exothermic, expelling heat. So this is the warm one. This is where warmth will come from if there's any. And this warmth has to do with them, uh, the the solute and the solvent mixing. So the solute and solvent can only mix if there's attractive forces between them. Is that okay? The, this one is due to the solute separating. This is due to the solvent separating. This is to, due to the two of them coming together. Is that kind of okay? That's not true. Weaker choices in the That's no. Increase in volume. That could be true, but I don't think it's related to the question. Ethanol has a lower vapor. No, that's probably not related. Is that okay? Do you want to think about it for a minute? Okay. Yes?
That's right. If it's an acid, it's Lewis acid, whether it's Lewis acid or acid, it's still an acid. Okay. So they're both the same, and any acid can also be a Lewis acid. Typically, when we say the term Lewis acid, we're saying uh, when the Bronsted Lowry and the Arrhenius definitions don't apply. Yeah. Like the transition metals, and neither of those would apply, so we call it a Lewis acid specifically. Okay. So it would be. Uh, Here's acids, and then there could be three types of acid, the Arrhenius, the Bronsted Lowry, and the Lewis acid, for example. They can overlap. Maybe I should do it more than like with a circle here. So it can fit into more than one definition, but they're all acids. Is that okay? And really, I guess I have not the Lewis acid would more be like this. Everything can be a Lewis acid. But some things are not these acids, but still those acids. So this question, uh, like some of these, uh, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. you got it. It's one of the classic uh, Lewis acids. Were you in my class? Right. Uh, I, I mentioned it a couple times, it's one of the classic Lewis acids because it's missing uh, electrons, so it wants to receive them. Uh, because, uh, well, whatever. Yeah, that's enough for now. Yeah, that's one to remember. Oh, okay. I have 23 here, A. Because making an ice table on an exam takes a lot of work, in the key for TAs, we typically just write this equation. This is the equivalent of the ice table in really, really shorthand form. You can do that if you want to memorize it. We won't give it to you, but it works. And, uh, uh, and TAs should accept it, yeah. Yeah, for weak acids, yes. Yeah, if your assumption works and it's a weak acid and all that, blah, 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 then yes, this formula is the same as the ice table. It's up to you whether you want to use it, but you could just do an ice table, you should get the same number. So that's like the molarity times the Ka value. The molarity, initial molarity of the acid times the Ka value. It is. That's why, yeah, you can feel free to use it. If you want while you're doing other examples, just do it both ways and see if you feel comfortable and you're always getting the same answer. Then I recommend using it. If you get tweaked out about it, then it won't, it will not be off. If it's off, you've messed up somewhere. It should be identical answer. Yeah. Uh-huh. This one. Uh, so, okay. Uh, let me... Yes. Yeah. Where do you see unreactive? Uh huh. So that means excess. Uh, so you can still solve it the same way. This is just like a certain style. But um, uh, you know the story of the in my class? Right. Um, how do you usually do that? Oh, OK. Let me see what it, let me remind myself here. Oh, see this right there? That is these two lines right there. It's doing the same thing. So if you do this, you should get the same number as this unburned reactive group used. This is a weak acid strong base. That's right. Yeah, so it would follow this exactly. You could just do this if that's what you're comfortable with. You should get the same numbers here. So ignore this garbage. Then do your thing. And then put it into your like little formula, whatever you're doing. You should get the same same number. Are are the last line? Right? Uh huh. 
That's right. Yeah, the reason this is just easier to write this than this when you're writing solutions. Yeah. Okay, well, that's kind of okay. See if you get the same numbers. You should. Hi, yes. Number six. Solution and that and that. Which of the following thing has best proxy? That I is that small space from the solution. Oh, you have that. Okay. Okay. That might be right. E obviously is ridiculous. No precipitated form. These are the opposite. A and B are opposite. The volume, the solution increases due to evaporation. No. Evaporation would decrease the volume of the solution. So that's totally wrong. Since the solutions that have different salts, they separate into two different layers. Something we've never even talked about. And salts actually would be lost. So it's A or B. So what you do is calculate Q and compare it to K. Did you do that? Okay, calculate Q and compare it to K. And you know if it's greater than K, it'll shift to the left and precipitate. If it's less than K, it'll shift to the right and not precipitate. Before you do that step, though, just in case you don't remember, you have to use the dilution formula to find the initial molarities afterwards. That M1, V1, V1 would be these numbers, and V2 would be the sum of the volume. So V2 would be 1,000. M1 for this one would be that. When you do it for this one, it would be that. So you have to do them separately. V1 would be this for this one, and would be this for this one. Okay? Okay, cool. Who's next? So, uh, for this problem? Yeah. Um, how do you do that? Uh huh. Okay. And so when I did that, um, you got the wrong answer. I got the wrong, I got a 22.2, and I solved using that, and I got that. Um, I, oh, uh, pause. How'd you get positive 850 here? Right. Right. That negative right there. <laughs> yeah, that's why. It on the actual, wait, is this the actual final? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can I say? That's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. 17. Okay, so what you want to do, uh, given uh, you got all these in solution, so you have potential lead chloride and silver chloride, so it's a KSP question. Okay, so, and they give you KSPs obviously. What's, how much silver remains in solution before, uh, just before this precipitates? So it's saying that uh, as you add a Cl minus, uh, the silver chloride should precipitate first, and the lead chloride should precipitate second. And you need more chloride to make this to precipitate. Is that okay? Well. Almost all the silver is going to be gone. It'll be a solid. But very, very little will still be around here. They want to know that number. It's going to be extremely small numbers. So, what you do is you go to the point of interest, lead chloride. This is the equilibrium point for lead chloride. You don't need it, but this is the equilibrium point for silver. Okay? So you put in the numbers that they just gave you, KSP, and then you also have the lead concentration. We solve for chloride. That's this number right there. Okay. And then you take that number and you put it in the other one. So you take that number and you put it in the other formula. Um, so it's, this is the equilibrium of silver chloride, but at this point. Okay. So you put it in the, in the first one, and the number that pops out is at equilibrium. When you have this much chloride, it's that much silver. Is that okay? Cool. Who's next? Okay. Okay. Um, it should be C. Okay. Here's why. The, it's asking you which one is not an elemental form. Is the question. 
And that A, B, and D are an elemental form, but elemental form for carbon is graphite. How would you know that? Well, where is that? It's very strong, but it's not elemental form. It means actually graphite. When your husband or whoever, spouse, gives you your diamond ring, it's actually slowly turning into graphite. Yeah, yeah, so you should be upset. When you get that diamond. Yeah, look here, page 15. Do you have my here? Okay, page 15. You need to know this if you don't know it, okay? All right, okay, probably the last two questions. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, you solve for M. Let's assume it's that number. Should I write on here? Do you have a number? Okay. It's actually would be moles per kilogram. That's the units of mole out. Okay. Then um, let's say uh, let's see. This is the solvent. And this looks like it's the solute. Is that okay? It's the last one. So you take this number, you want mole, you want Molar mass, okay. yeah, molar mass is grams per mole, okay? Well, grams, 0 0.64, they gave it to you. You just need the moles of this thing uh, as a number, okay? So, what you would do is you get it from here. So you go 0.5 moles, 0.5 or whatever, right a kilogram. And then you have the kilograms of the solvent. And this is kilograms of solvent. 0 0.100 kilograms. We're just changing from grams to kilograms. That's moles. Is that all right? And this is a pretty typical kind of question.